Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Toot Suite Surfer Club. Uh, and today we will be talking about a new series coming up and uh, that's pretty exciting because I did watch the six episodes and uh, they were fantastic. You know, they're fun. This is uh, something a little bit different and uh, and, uh, and and we really enjoy that. Uh, to go along with that, we'll be drinking a nice little Pinot Noir uh, 2011 from Las Bonitas, a good friend of mine doing that and uh, it's pretty tasty. Delicious. So uh, today on the set we have uh, um, Ed Robinson. Ed, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. And uh, Jody Yons. Young. Yons. Yons. Nice to meet you. Nice and meet uh, you. you're the producer and director of uh, the the whole thing. You're the creator. Mm -hmm. And uh, with them we have also from uh, uh, LA, uh, I believe, a bunch of uh, of uh, uh, people join us that are part of the program for a part of the series. And um, I'd like to go and maybe introduce them. Uh, we have Nate. Nate, good afternoon. How are you? Thank you for joining. And uh, Nate, uh, can you tell us a little bit what you do for the series? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes. Can, <laughs> yes. can you tell us? Can you tell us a little bit what you do in the series? Uh, yeah. You... Sure. Yes. I play. I play Bobbert, uh, which is uh, Ed Allen's best friend, <laughs> and uh, I kind of, um, I guess, a little bit of the catalyst to uh, him uh, starting to, you know, trying to meet girls and, uh, you know, uh, okay. he... Well, don't reveal too much, but we're going to go back to the synopsis of the, oh, uh, of, the uh, of, of, of the show, not that's quite right. And then we have Bin. Bin, good afternoon. And uh, where are you from, Bin? Are you in LA? Hi. Um, yeah, I'm in LA near the Pasadena area right now. How's the weather down there? Um, it is a very chilly 78 degrees right now. Uh, I know. I feel for you, buddy. <laughs> and then we have David and, uh, and Shannon that will be joining us, hopefully. Uh, but David, good afternoon. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Uh, yeah, Shannon will be here in a moment. Um, we're both actors in the piece, uh, friends of uh, Alan's. Uh, Shannon actually plays Alan's sister. Okay, fantastic. And uh, Rob? Good afternoon, Rob. Hi. I, I'm Rob Gokey. I'm the composer, so I wrote all the music for pairings. This is a really important part of the show. All right, and uh, we have Keaton. Good afternoon. Hello, I'm Hello. Keaton, and I uh, I play Jan, who's uh, one of uh, the ladies that uh, Alan takes on a date. All right, well, here it is. So um, tell us a little bit how you came up with this idea and uh, and uh, and uh, how long you've been like working on that i mean that is that something that you decided to create you know in the last couple of years or something that you wanted to do for a long long time and uh, so what was the idea and uh, and uh, really um and, and how you were able to to uh, to pass this message along and uh, and uh, so start with the idea okay well uh, i mean if, uh, the, the idea came about about a year and a half ago okay. uh, uh uh, basically, we were doing exactly what we're doing now, and we were, it was late one night, and we had a, a bottle, maybe and a half of wine to drink, okay. and uh, we just started chatting about, uh, it's something we've talked about a few times, it's something we've talked about a few times, um, that in this day and age, in the new decade, that cooking is no longer something that, that women do most of the time. As a matter of fact, it's something that, that makes men sexy to women. If you can really show her a great meal and, and feed her well, that that makes a guy sexy. I mean, because it's almost like being the new rock star these days because you've got Jamie Oliver and I mean, no offense at all to Jamie Oliver. He's a very good looking man, but he's made so much more attractive by the fact that he cooks so yeah. well. And, and there's a lot of those kind of celebrity chefs who would be decent looking people if you met them regularly, but because they cook, yeah. they're, they're sexy individuals that everybody wants to sleep with. So you guys, are, so are you at all bodies already or from, uh, from the beginning or... Uh... Did you uh, did you know each other before the uh, before the show? Uh, well, I, I guess to start out, um, Ed wrote everything, so we kind of came up with the art concept together. But but he did all the writing. Um, he also played the lead character of Alan, <laughs> yeah. um, and together we uh, executive produced it. Um, and then I did the kind of on set producing. I directed two of the episodes. And uh, Ed's brother, um, who plays his brother in the show, Alan's brother. Uh, oh, we directed wow. the rest of the episodes. Unfortunately, Rick couldn't be with us today. Okay. Um, but you, the kind of the concepts came up, like he was saying, you know, when we just had this idea one day, and 
So you guys are married? Yeah. Well, that was one oh, of the yeah, reasons yeah. we have the idea. I mean, that's how you like, just, get to her. We happen to know each other because we live in the same house. And, well, that's, uh, about that's, seven years that's ago, how we you got get married. To her, like, that's <laughs> exactly how I got to her. Yes. Right, right. She's much better looking than I am. And yes, that, I, she would not have married me if I didn't cook. I'm, yeah. I'm very sure of that. And <laughs> uh, we were able to rope all of, um, all of our friends in. Um, we, we all are professionals. Um, they're all professional actors, uh, okay. composers, editors, directors. Um, because you know we only we only hang out with the best, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we were able to bring in all of our friends to be a part of our program. Well, it was nice. One of the things I've been doing lately to make a living is I've been catering film sets for a while. I, I actually started at uh, one of David Nett's sets. He he had a series called Night of the Zombie King, and uh, I started catering for that set. And yeah. I I just I was on all these sets all the time that yeah. I kind of met uh, so many great talented people that yeah. when I wanted to do my own web series, yeah. I just did my best to kind of pick and choose the people that I thought were the best to, to work with. Um, awesome. Hey, Keithan, you know, can you tell me a little bit like, uh, um, do you remember the day that uh, uh, um, they approached you about the idea and, uh, and uh, see if you'd be interested of uh, doing, the, uh, doing the show? Do you remember that? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I got an email and... Um, I think Val called you, right? What? Val, I think Val got in touch with you, right? Yeah, Val, um, who's Rick's uh, wife, she got in touch with me, and I was super excited because um, I have a two-year-old, and so for the past couple of years, I've been kind of out of commission in the acting world, and so I was super excited to have the chance to get back in with uh, a lot of these guys who I know, and um, David and Shannon I've worked with many times and adore, and so I was really excited to jump into the project. Great. How about you, Nate? I mean, what was the uh, what, what was the attraction to the to uh, to the uh, to the story? What you know? What made you? Oh, yeah, for sure, I want to do it. Uh, well, I first of all, I, I wanted a chance to work with this group of people again, and uh, you know, they're all friends already, and so that was the first thing. And then uh, reading Ed's script, it was really funny and. Uh, I thought it was really unique. I hadn't seen a, a kind of comedy like this where it combined the elements of a cooking show and, uh, you know, kind of romantic comedy together. So I thought it was really, uh, really different. Yeah. So how did you come up with this, uh, this idea of like doing like a, um, this is like eight minutes, uh, 10 minutes max, you know, and uh, and uh, how you came up with, uh, with uh, this idea of like doing those like, Kind of a, a of a, a daily uh, thing that happen pretty much you know ev you know every day for people you know and that's a really genuine I mean seems it feels like it I mean people I'm, I'm watching that I'm like well yeah it could happen to me the same type of conversation maybe um, you know we put more fuck into the conversation but, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it's a really uh, it's a really uh, um, it's very natural right I I will say the original script had a lot more cussing oh is that right <laughs> I, I I mean the, the original script, I, I was really important. I mean, I did a script that really was only okay. <laughs> I, uh, I I had to rewrite it a lot. I, I really had to lean on my brother, who's already an established uh, screenwriter, uh, and David and, and Frederick Snyder, all my friends, to give me a lot of advice to, to help me write it. So I just rewrote and rewrote and rewrote that script until I really felt like it was yeah. ready for the, the show and, and finely tuned. And you pulled a lot on... on you know, what you're used yeah. to, your, your history. And I'm used to a lot more people cussing. So that was originally in the script, but, <laughs> but people, saying, people, uh, I'm saying you, you pulled from your family history of cooking. But I did. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to make it more family friendly. Yes. So I pulled back. yes. 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 Because you know, you definitely, so this is about, so really the, 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 the movie, this is about, uh, uh cooking and woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there is a bet that uh, really uh, um, instigates the all the door the door series. I mean mm -hmm. that's a, a and this is your 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 brother, right? That or I think it's Bobbert, Bobbert uh, Nathan. Okay, uh, and that comes up with like a, a dare, you know, just I give you like ten thousand mm dollars, -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, if you can uh, just have fun. Exactly. Yeah. That, <laughs> the, the, I mean, the idea is that Alan isn't necessarily comfortable with his cooking and he doesn't think it's a sexy thing so it's not until all of his friends and family you know Addy and uh, played by by Shannon and, and David Ned and his brother Drew convince yeah. him that that cooking is going to work 
that he's going to have better luck. Because he, 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 it opens up right away. You see he's just terrible yeah. at dating. He can't. He doesn't have, have the first clue how to deal with women. So once he starts cooking for him, he, he starts to have better luck. But his friend Bobber basically dares him to say, look, I, it's not going to really work. You can't actually use that to sleep with women. Uh, and he makes a bet with him that's wildly inappropriate. And Alan originally refuses it. But, yeah, after some time uh, and has some success, he decides to take on the challenge to Actually, the the idea is that he wants to start his own brewery with his brother. So they want to they want to start. Oh, they're right. they, they 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 do a home brewing already, yeah, but they yeah. want to be able to set it on the store shelves. Why a brewery, no wine or oh, winery? Well, I, because they would beer, beer is faster. <laughs> that's true too. That's you true, only yeah. need a couple yeah. of months, yeah. and then you can drink that's, it. That's that's true. Yeah, yeah. Also, it's LA based, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and there's not a lot of good uh, grapes out in LA. Although you can buy them and bring them down mm-hmm. there. There's actually a Camarillo winery that makes pretty good wine down yeah. there. But. For the most part. Well, I mean, like, you know, they do the same thing in New York or, like, you know, like in Chicago and bring the wine from uh, the, the grapes mm-hmm. from, you know, the, the white country and, the, and the, do that there. So, how about the cooking during the course of the show? Is it like, you know, real cooking or this is, you know... You know no, it's pretty much we real cooking. It's all real cooking. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. It's, if anything, we've now learned that um, in film, they say you don't want to work with animals or children. <laughs> Add to that list food because cooking on camera is a pain in the butt. Not just cooking on camera, <laughs> eating on camera. Eating poor. on camera. Poor. So Shannon, um, the lovely Shannon Nelson has now joined <laughs> us, I've seen, and she has an awesome haircut. Um, short hair is really in. Um, <laughs> but she'll tell you that uh, dipped Madeline, having to eat them on camera, you should just ask her. <laughs> yeah, she can tell you about her experience. Yeah, it, it was like, a couple of dozen Madeleines, and I love Madeleines. Give me chocolate anytime, but you know, 12, 14 Madeleines in. It's pretty heavy. It was yeah. like three weeks of no sugar after that. So you made all that. And so, what is it like? You know, so, how do you get your, your uh, cooking skills? I mean, that's a, a, you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier that was from uh, your family side, and uh, and uh, what. Well, a lot of the show is really based on my own life, uh, and I, I fictionalize it. I mean, it's entirely fictionalized because we in the show, Alan's father is who teaches him how to cook okay. because his father is a chef. That wasn't really true. My father, I think, literally served us burnt cereal once. So uh, it was really my mom who was a really good cook, and I just kind of substituted the two. Um, but my mom was a great cook, so I learned from her. Yeah. And really, yeah. all the Robinsons, I have two brothers, and we okay. all cook, yeah. and we all are married, so yeah. it really works. <laughs> well, because uh, kind of it works. <laughs> it works. Oh, that's fantastic. So you guys uh, enjoy your food? You don't love it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that, I think that after it was like cut, I was like, anyone going to finish this? Because I'm going to just take this mushroom risotto and... <laughs> Yeah, the great thing on set was that when we were done shooting the scene, we could break for lunch and we had amazing food uh, right there. But, but Ed's catered a bunch of our projects, and he's always fantastic. It's a, he's an amazing cook. Yeah, I got to take home some of that mushroom risotto too, and it, it I just like portioned it out for a few days so that I could keep eating it. So what the, you know at this point, you know what, what you guys you know the, this questions for uh, every uh, you know all of you guys. What would be the most challenging uh, aspect of doing the series? Like the eating, the drinking, uh, IP beer all day long, or what is it? So, no, anyway, no. who's going? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was saying, like, you know, what would be, like, for, you know, all of you guys, you know, the most challenging aspect of doing the series is, is to remember the lines or the eating aspect of it or the drinking IPAs? Oh, I'd like to hear from, from Rob to see what he says about, about scoring it. What, what, what was Unfortunately, what was because about, about creating the music. any of the food, um, I wish I had thought about that ahead of time. I would have shown up on set every day just to hang out. Um, but I, I um, it, was, it was a really great experience. Ed and Cody were great to work with. And Ed, um, I feel like Ed and I got a shorthand together really quickly of how we wanted to have the music for the series play through. We wanted it very organic and um, light and um, dramatic in the moments where there's drama because it's really a dramedy. And, and although there's a lot of funny mm-hmm. in pairings, there's also, um, there's also a lot of heavy stuff at the same time. Uh-huh. So, okay. how's... Yeah, go ahead. 
Good. So say for me, it was stopping eating so I could say my lines. That was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and I do have to admit, one of the things that we did, we we. I, I, we had real beer and wine on set. I wanted it to look real. I don't know that that's legal, so... Yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to do that. I've already filmed it. Yeah, any, but anytime you see wine and beer on set, it's real wine and beer. Oh, is that right? Really? Yeah, you're but, you, but you're not that, supposed to... Yeah. We've already filmed it. I can't get in trouble now. Yeah, but you know, but that's a, but this is web. This is released on the web, right? That's yes. So the, the web is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, I mm-hmm. not. The web I is know. different. Um, we were still under a SAG contract, so oh, maybe point. I shouldn't yeah. be saying this. I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> but we did do it under an official SAG contract. I'm pretty sure there's no rules against it. I'm pretty sure that uh, there are plenty of actors in history that we all know pretty well that have. Uh, Utilize real, <laughs> honest to goodness alcohol. I'm never I've not. I've plenty of stories about oh, Quentin really? Tarantino. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so, how how difficult this is for you guys? You know, because you're the really the, the parents of this series here, and uh, and so you came up with the idea, and uh, and uh, you talk to your beautiful wife about it, <laughs> and she's like, you know, yes, I want to do it, and then what is the then after that, you know. How you work this out? I mean, that you know, you agree, she disagree, you have this, and then after that, you have a bunch of friends coming up here, and uh, and they all want to help. And uh, and uh, how is it difficult for you to keep like really uh, a focus on the, what your original idea was? And uh, well, you know, it was all actually pretty organic. I think I, one of the reasons I love film and I want to be a filmmaker or an actor is that I, it's such a collaborative art form. And I don't think any one person should have too much. Say. Even the writer or the executive producer, you, you, you want to get talented people together and make sure that all of your inputs are, are part of the project. Yeah. And that's what's going to make a great project. Yeah. You, we're not going to make the project great without Rob adding the music and the soul behind the show, without the actors bringing the, what they bring to the show, without being knowing what to drop. You know, It's hard for a writer to have the editor come in and say, let's just get rid of that scene. Yeah. But we needed that. Uh, and so you need to listen. You know, sometimes you have to say, no, I want it this way. It's important. But you need to listen and, and take everybody's ideas. And that's what I love about film. And yeah. that's wh- why I want to do it. I mean, it was great, though. It really almost organically, we agreed a lot. Like, I remember when I was, we were in the casting room with my brother. We were casting the role of Rose, who is a sushi chef yeah, yeah. Uh, in the, the show, who plays kind of Alan's confidant. Yeah. Um, and we, we, we saw a lot of women. And it was really interesting. We all decided to write down our top three choices about who we wanted for the role. Yeah. Uh, and then we were going to have to hash out who we wanted to oh. play the role. And we all wrote down our top three choices. And our, all of our number one picks were the same. So we, we just kind of went, yeah. okay, I guess that was really easy. <laughs> yeah. And there was a lot of that throughout the whole course of the show. So the, everybody is very involved into the, uh, into the, uh, into the, 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 the production, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and picking the, uh, who's going to be uh, playing such part and uh, that kind of thing. That's pretty cool. I think it was so, crazy. Yeah. The, the hardest part for us um, was probably raising money yes. in order to okay. pay for it. And we did that through Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, so we created a Kickstarter campaign, which is crowd uh, funding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crowd funding. Yeah. So we sent it out to all of our friends, all of our family, everybody we'd ever met in our entire lives yeah. and said, you know, even if you just donate to us $5, yeah. $10, and we had different levels. Um, and we ended up raising eight thousand uh, dollars through Kickstarter, which funded, um, I'd say, about three quarters of our budget. Okay. Um, and then we put in the rest of the money for that. Uh, but that was definitely the hardest because even though we only did forty-five day campaign on Kickstarter, which you know is probably one of the shorter ones. It was like a full-time job yeah. <laughs> going out there every yeah. every yeah. single day, sending emails yeah. and calling people and finding you know ways to to raise this money. Yeah. Um, so we're hoping maybe for season two we could get a sponsor. <laughs> right, so right now, how you got the distributing the the series? I mean, how you how, how you market your your uh, uh, the the six episodes that you have now and. Uh, and uh, um, besides, you know, the, the help of your friends as being part of it and all that, but you know, um, how you put, are you putting the, the series into the, the, the hand of producers or, or and, 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 and do you want to remain like, you know, what's the future of this series? You know, what you, um, do you want to make like a movie out of that? Or do you want to do like something like a more of a HBO type of it? Or do you want, uh, what kind of uh, um, channels are you trying to, uh, to, to get into? Um, well, to start with, uh, as far as the original distribution, we were very lucky that there's a, a channel uh, called Coldcast that's, that's mm-hmm. been around for about six years or so that you can 
you can download it to most of your smart TVs. Uh, if you have a Roku or something like that, you can, you can get it on your channel. Um, and they were launching a new food and cooking channel and they were looking for a fictionalized uh, show that was cooking themed, but they didn't think anything was out there. And then they found us. I actually think David Ned hooked us up with them and, and they used us as their flagship yeah. show. They were very excited about us and they launched us. And that's how we've gotten a lot of our advertising was yeah. just through them. We got right away. We had almost 400,000 views in the first couple of weeks. Just oh my God. Like, yeah. We're, I mean, we're at about 700,000 now, but we, we just right out of the gate, just because they had so many people yeah. interested in their new sh their new channel. Um, uh, as far as the future, I would I mean I'd love to see us on TV. Yeah. I do not actually want to be filmed because I think one of the, the the charm of pairings to me is that it is a, 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 an episodic show. Yeah. Uh, and I, I want to keep that uh, as part of what pairings. So like you know, you're talking about like more like a, a, a boardwalk uh, empire and, I mean, I'd and love, uh, that I'd kind love of thing. <laughs> but you know, but in the hey, video, please. This is a little bit the same thing. I mean, to me, like when I watch this uh, series, this is about cutting. This is like, you know, this movie is like, you know, okay, let's say like, you know, this is an hour long of a, and then they cut, you know, every scene, you know, to a T and, uh, and uh, those scenes are powerful enough, you know, to create their own stories. Yes. You know, and then after that, it's just a matter of like, a, you know, putting things together. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm not a movie. I mean, I'm just <laughs> watching this. This is like a really, uh, what? We also created it intentionally to be a web series, yeah. and that kind of changes the way that you write it, the way you film it, and the way you edit it together. So, you know, like we were saying, the, the five five to eight minute long episodes, people don't have as much of an attention span to sit in front of a computer to watch it. Yeah. However, those things are changing, yeah. like cold cast um, and flip. Um, yeah. Even YouTube, Netflix, know, Netflix, and Netflix. Netflix. There, yeah. there are places you that are doing. You can see in front of your TV to watch yeah, it, yeah, so those yeah. things are changing. And iTunes, but doing, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But but we intended it to be a web series, which is why we only did you know the five to eight minutes. Yeah. Sometimes people's computers can't handle you know something that's longer than ten minutes to sit and watch and process and download. But I would hope if we did if we could go to a twenty-two minute format. Uh, you do half an hour with eight, with commercials, we could still keep the level of intensity and and yeah. Each scene the, the same. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. I, I, that would be my goal: is that every moment is as important as it is in the eight-minute episode. Well, and uh, talking about intensity, I think that like, something is very important to, the, to uh, that we never really talked about. I mean, I never really pay attention until last, you know, uh, um, film festival we had in Napa. But it's about music, so yeah. I guess this is, question is going to be for Rob here. And uh, um, how, how difficult this is like, for um, to, to to create or to uh, to kind of pair music with uh, 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 scenes that are, uh, uh, you know, usually are so short. I mean, what is your, your uh, how do you think about it? For, for me, the way it works is I take inspiration from the, the script and from the acting within the video itself. Um, I need to watch the scenes in order to be, to find the right music that's paired, um, no pun intended, <laughs> with, yeah, with the series. That. Um, and, and then on, on top of that, it's the director's vision. Um, and in this case, it's Ed, Jody, and, and Rick, and what they hear in their heads when um, they watch the scene. And then I try and interpret that um, with my own musical ability. So are you like a, a music buff? I mean, you know every type of music existing on Earth? Well, <laughs> I, I mean, in order to be a composer for film and TV, you have to play many different types, of, or at least know lots of different styles. Um, for instance, I'm, I'm not a fan of jazz music, but I end up writing lots of yeah. jazz scores, which are oh, well, and bad. Cost of Capital that you did recently had a very different score. is very... And that was very much like social network. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just have to be, you have to be malleable and, and, um, open to trying things that you may or may not feel comfortable doing because you never know where your strengths are going to lie. Yeah. What, what, what was the most difficult, you know, uh, when you get into that and start to film and all that, you know, who's doing the filming anyway? You have your own crew or? Uh, uh, well, we, uh, I mean, uh, Rick and Jody directed, but we hired, uh, uh, Seth Johnson was our DP. It was important for me to, okay. to me, uh, to get him, uh, okay. cause I, he, I really felt like he, he's a foodie himself. Yeah. So I felt like he knew how to light and, and shoot food. Also our gaffer, uh, who was our, who did all the lighting for our, our show. Okay. Uh, he also does food photography. So they knew how to 
get the food to look yeah. good on camera. And that was important. Yeah. Um, and so we just brought in professional help that, yeah. you know, we'd met and, and known throughout the years to help us get all of and, that. And you're able to do that with like the 8,000 dollars that you raised on the Kickstarter <laughs> and uh, we, like that. We, well, uh, we, 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 we did pay as many people as we could, but yeah. most people donated. And the people who did, we did pay, they were, they were very, very underpaid. Yeah. I mean, pre pretty much everyone donated their time to this project yeah. and we, I have to thank them yeah. a, a, a great ton. You know, I, I keep thinking about uh, the, one of the biggest challenges for me. In, in Everyone has paid in Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> we paid them in food. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Totally cool. <laughs> You're still waiting? Yeah, I'll get them, my man. <laughs> you had some at the, at the rap party. <laughs> or, or maybe you didn't. I don't know. Um, what were your biggest challenges? I, I actually think a lot of post-production was my biggest challenge because I mean I'd done I'd been even if I was just catering or acting I'd been part of the uh, I've been part of the uh, uh, production world for a long yeah. enough time but um, post-production was new to me so I you know Rob's asking me what kind of music I want and I'm I'm trying to explain to him what kind of music I want and yeah. I have no idea how to yeah. explain to somebody this is the style of music I want or or what the because you don't even know. I don't know. I'm I mean, not a yeah. musician. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. I, and even with the editing, I don't know how to explain and how to what beats yeah. to get. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was probably the most difficult part of me was communicating with Ben and Rob. Luckily, they were very good at interpreting what I was trying to say yeah. and not what I was actually saying and, and did a good job. Yeah. So uh, how about for you? Was the uh, um, I mean, well, were you also like in a in a in a movie background? And a, a pro I did actually. I went to school for film. Okay. Um, and I I wanted to be a cinematographer. I like photography. Um, and actually, probably my biggest challenge was having um a brand new full time job mm. at the same time as filming this because you know as you know we raised the money, we did yeah. everything on our own time, so everything was after work on the weekends. Um and having a brand new full-time job was really hard to, yeah. to do it at the same time. And I, I have no idea how David and Shannon do it because they do, <laughs> they do this all the time. Um, and if you, if you have any, um, any tips, David or Shannon, on, on how to have a full-time job and shoot um, almost full-time as well, I, I'd love to hear them. There, there are no tips. It's all I can do to keep my hair. Like that. Uh... <laughs> uh, because um, it's, it must be like having five children. Yeah. Because you don't sleep yeah. ever. Yeah. That's why we don't have kids. <laughs> Correct. When people ask why we don't have kids, I point them to the stuff we have out in the world. So also, also the way Keith let herself go afterwards was yeah. bad hard for us. Same. She's not so hot anymore. <laughs> Well, and they, you probably think as much money into the, the shows, too. We don't want to talk about that. We've sent, like, four or five kids to college by now. In certain. So, yeah, so uh, what's next? So um, so you're doing this series here. The, the goal is to raise even more money. How long does it take you to do, like, a, to shoot one episode? I mean, you, you did a Kickstarter, I think. Uh, Sim told me that, but uh, uh, that was about like a four or five months ago, right? It yeah, was actually in old. February. Yeah, February. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's been like almost, almost a year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not quite a year ago. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so, and how long does it take you like to do a show? This is like a, a, an episode. This is one day shoot, or this is what is it? Well, we didn't shoot episode by episode because we had. Oh. I mean, it was only like forty five minutes total okay. that we were filming, so we filmed it like a like we shot it like a film. So we shot out each location. So we had, say, Alan, uh, the character I play, Alan's yeah. uh, bedroom or, or an apartment, and we shot everything there. So that was a weekend. Yeah. Um, the total shooting time was, I believe, eight and a half days because we shot over four weekends okay. and one weekday in the middle. Uh, yeah. we, we, we shot some stuff. Um, but, yeah, so we shot out each location. And the, the, the one of, that's another big challenge for us was I wrote into the script uh, like a moron, a sushi restaurant, uh, and that's that. That we didn't have any idea how to get the sushi restaurant. I kept going back to the script like every couple of days, going, "Can I write out the sushi restaurant? Is there any way to get this out of there because it's too expensive?" Yeah. But we, it just we really felt like we needed it, and luckily, you know, it was just a matter of asking. We, you know, we just went to a lot of sushi restaurants. We yeah. emailed people, we called yeah. people, and eventually we just had dinner at a sushi restaurant and asked the owners, and and they were kind enough to let us shoot there. I mean, we 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 paid 
for to let them shoot there, but not nearly enough. Yeah. It was it was really kind of them. What was the name of the restaurant? Central Sushi. Hey, yeah, you go. Definitely sushi wanna Central. Sushi Central. <laughs> sushi <laughs> Central. Uh, and uh, they were Phillip, really nice. Philip um, Yi and Tally, uh, they were really really. And that actually is interesting. Yeah. That ties in to the the show, especially probably some stuff going forward in season two. It, we were Tally was our chef, and it was it was interesting because Tally is Israeli and she's a woman, and yeah. I had no idea uh, until I thought about it that uh, you never see female sushi chefs, yeah. and apparently there's a big taboo against it. Like you're, they they, they actually claim uh, all, sushi chefs claim that women's temperature body temperature runs a few degrees hotter than men's, and therefore they ruin the fish as they cook it. No, it's ridiculous, but they they they, they people are very that? rabidly rabid about that being true and so Tally really had to fight not just the stigma of being not Asian yeah. but the stigma of being a woman to really be a sushi chef yeah. and so it was really interesting and that uh, while our sushi chef is Asian she is a woman and that definitely is going to tie into that character and yeah. be part of that character going yeah. forward with the show. So you like her? Tally? Yeah. Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well that's, that's, that, that's the impression I had at the end of the, 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 the you know, well, I'm so stupid. You know, just like, you know, she doesn't have a ring and, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, that's the surprise ending at the end of season. Well, I mean, we yeah. watch season one, uh, <laughs> watch season one, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that, 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 you know, no, that, 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 that was pretty, um, that's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. So what the, Kitten. So what, uh, what, what do you like about her doing this series here? I mean, like, you know, uh, um, she has a long role or she's going to die soon <laughs> or into the movies or how it goes? I mean, do you like to script this out, you know, like, you know, like way in advance or, or, or this is like something that, uh, um, you know, every day you can, you know, you can tweak it around and, uh, and uh, kind of change the course of the, the story or I don't know. Well, well, Keaton's character, um, she was the one that, uh, she was the second date, or rather the first date that Alan has that he kind of realizes, oh, this might work if I cook for her. Um, so, so she may come, she come might... out pregnant. Come out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, he doesn't succeed with Keaton. <laughs> he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't quite succeed, but if you notice later on, she says that she might come back for a foodie call. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so... We, we, maybe we'll see Keaton again. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing with Keaton's character is it was... Im- one of the early pro- drafts of the script, a, a lot of the comments we got was, as soon as Alan started cooking for women, he just immediately started having them sleep with him. Uh, and, and people said it happened too easily. And I agreed. Yeah. And so somebody, I think <laughs> the analogy we were given was that it was like I'm Alan found a superpower. He found a superpower that cooking will get women to sleep with him. Yeah. But we needed to see him fail with his superpower. He had to get scared of his superpower. Yeah. So Keaton's the girl that comes in. It works. Yeah. Uh, Keaton's ready, but Alan's like, oh my God, this is, this is ridiculous. I can't, no, I, I can't do this. So he spills wine and ruins the date. And, and well, <laughs> you should never do spill wine. That would be terrible. Well, I mean, it happened. You know, I know some people who does that. <laughs> I think uh, we have some, uh, some questions from the audience here. No? Yes? No? Not really? Okay. So, the what? Oh, so we're going to watch a trailer. Uh, some people are watching... Uh, um, Let's, uh, let's check it out a little bit and, uh, and see what this is all about. I mean, I'm I know talking about it enough, yeah. Oh, that's you. I, that is me. <laughs> yep. How is it you're still single? Because it's illegal, man. Sorry, it's through your stomach. No, I don't buy that. Women like food just as much as men. You know, if you could get a woman to actually taste your food, even you could get laid. You play a girl, elf, D&D character. So? Oh? I don't mean elf getting women. I wouldn't put it quite so eloquently, but you kind of do. <laughs> Would you find a man who cooks attractive? Mostly for soup. Uh, I, it's great with some beets and some apples. Yeah, she's cute, but she's married. She's got like a kid. What's the problem? Dude, <laughs> do you do everything as well as you bake? I haven't seen the whole one before much recently. Just cook. Food affects the same brain chemistry that sex does. <laughs> oh my god. Starting you okay with this? <laughs> Crap. <laughs> 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 next. Really? Can you just excuse me? Well, you know, I, I think when I grow up, uh, I want to be like Alan. To be like Alan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, are you okay? Like, I saw some scenes here, and, uh, and so you're on the set. 
and uh, you have hour and spend the weekend shoot and all. <laughs> take 20, take 30. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because that, that particular scene where um, uh, the girl's name is Raquel, right? Raquel? Raquel, Raquel Cockle. Uh, and we actually shot that in our bed, in our bedroom. <laughs> and um, by the way, that whipped cream is hand whipped, um, made completely from scratch, yeah, because I mean, that's I the only way we'd have the food on set. And you made it, I bet you. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> he, he is the cook. <laughs> I am the eater. Heavy cream, <laughs> powdered sugar, a little bit of vanilla, and then you just whip it with uh, your mixer at home until you, you get <laughs> firm peaks. Uh-huh. But uh, we actually, that was the one day that Raquel's boyfriend was on set. Oh, is that right? I was on set. Um, Ed's brother was, was there kind of directing things. And so we're all in the room together, and the only person that is really uncomfortable is Ed. Well, Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was there with paper towels, like, don't get this on my sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, the thing was, normally as an actor, if you do a scene like that, you blame, you're like, well, you know, this is how it's written. Yeah. You, know, like, you blame the writer because yeah. you have to be doing but it. But you're the, the writer. Well, yeah, exactly. So I feel like some dirty guy who's yeah. like, I wrote this scene. Yeah. To me, it was, it was really uncomfortable for me. But Raquel was fine with it. She was fine with it. The boyfriend was fine and, with it. And, and you get to feed the actress, too. <laughs> I <did>. I <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is that the actress is actually um, an ex-student of... Ed's brother. Yes, that sounds terrible. Who was the one that was directing it. <laughs> like an ex-college student. <laughs> an ex-college student, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, our, our, our casting director, Valerie Robinson, we, so we, we got uh, one of our friends to be a casting director. It's what she does professionally. Oh, yeah. What my sister-in-law, uh, to be the casting director, because that's what she does professionally, and, and she found all these great talents for yeah. us, and Raquel was somebody she thought would be great for that role. The, 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 the gag with that character is, that you never actually hear her speak properly. She always has a mouthful of food. Yeah, yeah. So in that scene, she has yeah. a mouthful of whipped cream. Yeah. And she, she appears a couple other times with just a ton of food in her mouth. <laughs> so, all right. So, like, uh, uh, so now you're, like, uh, cooking a little bit uh, <laughs> of, uh, what is it, a salad you're making? I, yeah, just while we sit and talk for a little while. Okay. I, I find this is something I make on set a lot. It's actually in the show, but you don't see it a lot. It's a, a curry mm. chicken salad. Um, it's one of, I mean, I think everybody on camera has had it. Maybe not Rob, um, <laughs> but, uh, it's something I make on just about every set I cater. Uh, so it's chicken salad, but it's just got the, the slight twist of being a, a curry flavored. And I'm actually going to be making, um, oh yeah. And since cucumber dill sandwiches, but he's going to tell me how to do it because I just eat the food. He cooks it. Um, and, and the reason we're going to do that is because yeah. one of the things that happens in the show is that Alan finds a challenge at one point where he has to cook for a vegetarian and he has a, meat, a fridge full of meat. So, uh, and actually, it's Keaton that plays the vegetarian. Indeed. And we make mushroom risotto for her. But So this is this. Imagine you're going out to a picnic. You want something that goes nice with wine. And you're going to go out yeah. hiking and have a picnic. You want to make a couple sandwiches. You can make curry chicken salad sandwiches. And she's going to make the vegetarian cucumber dill and cream cheese sandwich. Pretty easy to make. Both of them. Yeah. I mean, this is a little harder. It yeah. requires some chopping. That's very, very simple and yeah. delicious. That's yeah. why I'm making it. Yeah. The, uh, the curry chicken salad is the only chicken salad Shannon will eat. It's curry <laughs> chicken salad, so. Uh, is that right? I come. I'm usually not a fan of, like, mayonnaise-based foods, <laughs> and uh, just the, the twist on it makes it so yummy. <laughs> So um, let's uh, let's have a, like you know uh, hear from uh, from uh, Nate and Bean and uh, Rob. We haven't you know talked to them a little, a little bit. And uh, um, so let's take Nate first. And uh, um, Nate, um, in in the uh, in the show, um, what exactly what was exactly your role here? I play Bobbert, uh, Alan's best friend. And what what is your like, what what is your mission? That. What is my mission? Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, for me, it's it's just you know I I, I took it as uh, he he's a good friend to Alan, uh, but he can't resist kind of upsetting the balance of things, and uh, you know he throws he's always throwing these bets out, and uh, he threw kind of you know the big bet out. Yeah. Um, and so he, he, I think he, he really enjoys, uh, you know, upsetting things a little bit and, and seeing what comes of it. 
And uh, he, he may, maybe goes a little too far with this one, but makes for makes for interesting TV. So he also and, hates and, pants. What's that? He hates wearing pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we see a lot of Bobbert on the show. Yeah. Uh, well, he's, in, he's in his domain, you know. He's the ruler of his own domain, so he's going to yeah. be comfortable there. So. Um. One interesting tidbit that I, I'm not even sure you know, Nathan. Uh, oh, no. When I wrote, when I wrote Bobbert, no, no. It, it, when I wrote Bobbert, I envisioned Bobbert as a giant fat guy. <laughs> like, that was the original intent of, of Bobbert. Uh, it wasn't until, I mean, we were having a, an unrelated table read, and I, I had you read the role of Bobbert, uh, yeah. and like, I didn't want anybody, after the table read, I, I just didn't see it being played any other way. So that Well, was, thank you. I, I'm glad you went uh, skinny and, and lanky instead of... <laughs> Yeah. Nathan's a skinny white guy with the soul of a fat guy. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> you you've um, been watching me eat Madeleines, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More seasons, you might get your wish, Ed. So. <laughs> so what is the uh, um, Ben? You know, in your opinion, um, what is the uh, this uh, uh, the series with Kara two? What 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 kind of audience do you think? Uh, would be attracted uh, um, uh, to watch that kind of a, of, a, of, a, of series. Well, obviously, uh, anyone who likes food, which is probably a lot of people, <laughs> and um, you know, in, in general, people who you know are interested in uh, web series. Uh, it, it's a really exciting new type of media. Um, granted, it's been around uh, for uh, us web series people. Where you know we. we built this really nice community of really interesting art, uh, really interesting creative stories, and, you know, just added on to the fact that oftentimes we don't have the budget of a big studio, um, it, the challenge and to pull it off is, is amazing. Um, you know, so in this case, you know, as, as uh, Ed said, you know, this is a dramedy, so um, what we really focused on was to have, uh, you know, really good character, really good story. You know, you look at people who, you know, here's, you know, people like the underdog. People like, you know, Ed, you know, I'm, the Allen character as you know, this guy who obviously has trouble with girls, you know, and, you know, some guy can relate. <laughs> <laughs> but just like you know, it, it's a universal thing where you know you're you're trying to find yourself, and um, through you know, and life is silly, and life is can be serious at times, and you know, definitely try to um, push some uh, into the story uh, through editing and through the Ed's excellent writing and Rick and Jody's directing so uh, so what, what 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 about you like what uh, um so what do you think uh, what uh, um you know what attract people yeah. to the show yeah what was it what was you do you have an audience it would be what, like a, uh, maybe uh, um putting demographics into that would be like you know a younger age or uh, um, mid age like me and uh, uh, old age like Susan, <laughs> or um, well, who 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 would that who, who would that be? I mean, that's a. Uh, I think it it kind of is all over the place. Yeah. Um, you know, we weren't necessarily trying to reach a target um, age, but I I think from what I've heard, it's a little bit of everything. You know, maybe our age range. You know, thirties. Yeah. Um, and, and definitely, uh, clearly, it's not completely flam family friendly, but a lot of families. And and actually, Ed just got this really great email last night um, from a guy that we did uh, a radio show on called Surfing Aliens, um, Tim Keaty. And it was such a nice email. It was about how after watching the show, he started doing more family dinners. Yeah. Um, you know, bringing his kids in, they sure. would always do like a Sunday movie night, and now they're kind of cooking as a family. Yeah. And it was because of watching our show, which we just found really touching. Well, and, and he said that it was making the memories last more yeah. because the flavors. Oh, sure. Well, I mean, that's one of the things with food is that it, it, it flavor 
is one of the things that lasts in your memory. Yeah. You know, you remember your favorite meals, whether it was on vacation. You just you always remember those great meals that you've had, and and it it just really touches a part of your memory. And yeah, one of the things that we've gotten a lot of feedback on is that while I agree that I don't know that we have a target age, uh, I think we we have to aim a little bit towards younger audiences because they're the ones that are a bit more. Uh, those are who are watching web series that age will continue to get older and older as more people watch web series. Yeah. but people who are surfing the internet and getting more and more of their content online um but yeah well, it, it really can touch a lot of people because you know we we deal with loss uh you know we, one of the reasons that i think a lot of people are attracted to the show is episode four where we start really dealing with a loss of a family member and what i what the feedback that i've been getting that i love to hear is not that we just trying to press you with the fact that you're dealing with the loss yeah. of a loved one, but that it brings you closer uh, <clears throat> yeah. to the people you're still, yeah. who, everyone that's, uh, your siblings and everyone that's still yeah. alive. Yeah. Uh, so it's not just the emotional grief, it's also reconnecting with the rest of your family yeah. after the loss of someone. Yeah. And, and that's universal. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's been nice to hear that that's, what people are yeah that's a, but, you, show but you do have that i mean you watch that i mean it's pretty hard to like a really pinpoint that you know they're, they're, it's just like you know it's pretty emotional i mean that's not that's that's not necessarily a comedy you know that's a comedy to 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 to, to, to a point that's not necessarily a drama either no you know that's not like you know where you know you you cry you know that's not the, the, the thing you know but uh there is like something that is it's gentle, you know, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and it's, uh, the story and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 something too uh, that is pretty interesting that I don't get at all. But this is the uh, the nerd part of it. I mean, <laughs> I think that you know, uh, you know. well, no, no but uh, kidding, uh, but it, it's just uh, I don't get it because I think this is a really. Hey, look, I mean that's a. Uh, uh, I love cooking, and it's just like you know, would I be a nerd? I mean, like it's just a. Uh, I may be shy and everything like that, but I don't think that the nerd, I mean, to me, this is like the nerd that, you know, with like, a, a, you know, three glasses and a, and a short <laughs> pants and a, and a kind of, you know, air, you know, it's just, a, it's a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. So, but it's a different type of nerd. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard um, people say, I think it's Stephanie Thorpe, uh, who was in the show, she plays a character in episode five, that always says that nerd has kind of been taken on a new meaning. It's it's really just about somebody who's obsessive about something these days. You can be a wine nerd. You can be a food nerd. You can be a, a, a nerd about a lot of different things. But we do go kind of the traditional route with the nerd in this one. We wanted Alan to be a nerd. I mean... So as a collector nerd? A collector? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean... I don't know. I mean, I, I, they're a nerd in their own I, way. I, it's just I don't know. I mean, that's you know. You keep a like, house full of a bunch of items that don't matter to anybody but you and a few group of people. That that's kind of a nerd thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, even if it's, I mean, I, it's a it's a lot more nerdy when it's something that has the stigma of being yeah. a nerd. Like like, Alan loves to play board games with his family. They play really nerdy things. Alan is a nerd. He's into Star Wars. He's into Marvel comics. He's into. Uh, 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 D and D. He plays D and D at one point during the show. You even see in the in the Dungeons trailer that he plays a girl elf Dungeons and Dragons character. The the thing is though, he needs to be able to. At first, he needs to be able to overcome that. Yeah. Um. To 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 be more to to cook and 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 be understand be more confident with women. But I think the message we're ultimately trying to convey is that you need to be comfortable with that because mm. by the end you realize he's kind of done some things wrong. You know, the route he took and stopped being himself, he gets into trouble. You know, yeah. he starts cooking for men and sleeping with women, and that gets him into trouble. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a good thing what he does. Um, it's not a bad thing in the group. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, if it, it, you know, I mean, come on. No, 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 you're right. <laughs> Um, uh, but I do think he kind of learns the lesson at some point that being himself is the most important thing. Uh, oh, you, you, you find your way eventually, but, uh, but it does help. It, yeah. he, cooking gives him the confidence to find that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure it's going to be a very stupid question. I'm going to, I'm going to ask now, but, uh, you know, how different is, uh, um, Ed to Adam? You know, what's weird is I don't, I don't think that's a stupid question at all. We're all playing different characters from what we normally play. And 
the interesting thing is, while I really feel like I based this script off of my life, very, I mean, all the themes are there. I lost my father not that long ago. Uh, and I have, I have a close relationship with my siblings and I cook and there's so many things that are similar and I am a nerd. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm that much like Alan. Alan is very soft spoken. Uh, I don't think anybody would describe me as soft spoken. Um, I, I, I actually originally was going to write the script with, with the role that I was going to play as more of a side character. I was thinking I would be more of my brother Drew or Bobbert, but I, I just, as I, I, as I wrote, I realized I needed to really be cooking on yeah. screen and that needed to be my hand and you needed to see me do that. And I wrote Alan to be that character, but I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I share Alan's passions, yeah. but uh, some of our personality quirks I think are different, but I mean, I can't see myself. They can talk more. Yeah, well, the, yeah, exactly. Guys, I'll jump in. If, uh, if, uh, you know, if you can add to that or, or disagree with that, you know, please, you know, I think, I think in the early drafts of the script, I think Alan was a lot more different from, from Ed. Uh, earlier drafts of the script, Alan was a lot more, as he found his uh, cooking superpower, was a lot more of a, of a player and, um, and less of a nice guy, more of a – earlier drafts, he had like a shaved head. He shaved shape when he got cool, he shaved his head and he wore sunglasses all the time. And, and he became oh. sort of this like douchey uh, player kind of character. That was a lot different from Ed. I actually think as the script progressed – it became a lot more like Ed. Um, I, I, I think there's probably more of Ed in it than he would admit or realize. <laughs> that might be true. Oh. But I, no, I, I agree that uh, early draft of the script, before I started writing it in my own voice, I think there was less of yeah. me in it. So and that now the, 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 the new script for season two and uh, three, I, is season two already done or, or are you still on the, on the process of... Uh, of uh, well, we certainly haven't filmed season two yet. We yeah, but you know, like but... You know, the script and the, the the talents are all you know set aside, so like uh, most of them will come back. Well, I don't Maybe know. Are people you... coming back? Are or, you guys uh... all coming back? <laughs> oh, obviously. A lot of Madeleines. Only uh... if I can be Nathan's butt double this time. <laughs> I'm insisting upon that. <laughs> sure, Nathan, as long as Nathan's okay with it. Um... <laughs> As far as a script, uh, we have written about not quite half of the second season. Okay. Uh, we have the whole, we know what's going to happen. We know the yeah. whole story. Yeah. I've, I've actually sat down and written about half. Yeah. And yeah, we see, uh, so far we see even, we don't see more of Bobbert, but we, 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 that continues. Sorry, Nathan. And, and Nathan, going to show up for the food. <laughs> Thanks. What did you say, King? I said, I'm just going to show up for the food. I'm just going to show up a couple days. That, that's how we started, you know, season one. And uh, we hope people just show up for the food. Make it really I think good post-production one, will be so. showing up, too. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm just going to be there on set every day hanging out. And I'm pretty sure that Addy just gets filmed whenever I show up at your brother's house. It's pretty much just <laughs> whatever I'm saying. I'm never that's going true. Home. One of the things that's interesting is I wrote uh, into the script that Addie, uh, that Shannon plays, punches people uh, as a playful thing, but punches them a little too hard yeah. as part of the script. I didn't realize until we were doing a table read with Shannon that she was like, I actually used to do this. I did. I had a friend in junior high who said she wouldn't be friends with me anymore if I kept punching her in the arm. <laughs> I had to change my ways. <laughs> I was unself aware at the time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, we hope to do, we, we will do season two. We will wrap up the story somehow. I'd love to keep going, uh, season three, season four, as yeah. long as we can. Um, we, we need to, the, the, the next step is finding some kind of funding. It would be yeah. great to get a sponsor. Uh, um, we don't want, I mean, we'll, 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 we might, we will probably do some kind of crowdfunding again, but I don't want that to be for the full, full amount. Yeah. I'd like to get some kind of sponsor for season two and have, uh, you know, we have so much cooking going on. It would be yeah. great to have somebody, you know, we could easily feature your food without feeling like we were selling out. Uh, although, I mean, we would be. Are you like uh, thinking like uh, maybe, uh, um, I don't know, but uh, involving a, um, a well-known chef? I'd love and to. And to and to that, you know, where, you know, you could be his little grasshopper. One of you the know, most... the guy like, you know, is like 50 years older than you are. And uh, hey, I remember that boy, <laughs> you know, just... <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm definitely considering that. Um, I, 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 there's, you'll, we'll have to see season two and see what happens yeah, with that. Yeah. But one of the things that was an interesting question that I got asked 
was what celebrity chef would I most like to see be yeah. part of pairing season two. Um, and after thinking about it a while, I came up with a couple, but I, I think Chef Morimoto uh, from Iron Chef would yeah. actually be my favorite because we do the sushi. We do the sushi, yeah. and I would actually like to concentrate more on the sushi, and I don't cook sushi. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the characters... But you don't cook sushi, sushi, though. I don't. Not well, really. Because you don't cook sushi. Well, you don't, of course, no, you're right. You, I, don't, I don't cut and make yeah. sushi. <laughs> there's some sushi you cook. There's tempura rolls. There's, but you're right. No, most of it is, uh, yes, prepared. But uh, uh, He'd prefer to have Padma Lakshmi on it. I don't, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I mean, everybody would prefer to have Padma Lakshmi on the show. So Chef uh, Morimoto would be the uh, your your. Uh... We'd have to have we'd have to bring her in and have her like maybe play Rose's father or something uh-huh. to that effect. But it would be great to have him on. I'd love to explore more of the sushi making uh, uh, process. I actually know that he is part. He's he, one of the things that he does is he is um, a big proponent of uh, getting people to cook and getting uh-huh. them off of uh, uh, the streets. So he actually yeah. does have a hand in a lot of organizations yeah. that get people who are troubled youths into cooking and, yeah. and that kind of thing. And I'm sure, I, I can't imagine that he, he wouldn't be on the side of sushi chef. <laughs> he's an intimidating presence, yeah. that guy. But it was, oh, he's, he's big. I mean, like, you know, I mean, he has a restaurant here in Napa and, uh, and uh, we, you know, we have the opportunity of seeing him from time to time. The guy's pretty, uh, you know. He really is. Oh, yeah, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty big. You That's know? crazy. So, um, I just think he'd add a lot to the storyline, seeing seeing him and and learning more about the making of sushi. We we saw. Uh, have you seen the the? There's a documentary out called Jiro Dreams of Sushi, and that's no, really that's, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's just interesting seeing them go in Japan to the fish markets and buy the fish and how that gets to the uh, the the table. It's just sushi is a fascinating experience. It's quite its own culture. In the sense of one country, like a. Since we're in, in, in a one country, you know, how important the, uh, the one is with your food? Oh, well, um, I, I'm, I, I, that was actually one of my early experiences growing up was I think the very first time I liked wine. My, my parents actually let me have a sip of wine starting when I was around 16. Mm-hmm. And then I was able to have like a half glass. Oh, you're late bloomer. <laughs> Yeah, late bloomer. Uh, and maybe, maybe in your country. Right. I distinctly remember the very first time that I really, you know, I drink it because my parents drink it, but I really distinctly remember the first time really loving wine was my brother made these really gourmet uh, burgers. Yeah. Uh, and he, he had a, I don't know, I'd have to ask him what he, what he poured, but he poured a red wine and it just, it, it, it was amazing to me how much the wine made the burger taste better and the burger made the wine taste yeah, better. Yeah. And so pairings has yeah. always been an important uh, part of cooking to me. So, I, I mean, it, it ties into the show. The show is a play on words with also kind of romance, but uh, I, I always try and think about what would pair well with the food that I'm serving. And I don't always know that it's wine. There's a lot of time that I think it's beer. Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Or something so like that. So do you think like a beer and wine, a beer pair are as good as a, a wine? I do think so. I think, I think beer pairs just as well with food as wine does. Yeah. Uh, I, that being said, Wine takes a lot longer and is a much sure, yeah. harder process, yeah. um, but I, I, I think they both have their place. Do you make your own beer? I, I have helped a friend make beer a couple times, but I haven't done it in my own place yet. Yeah. I haven't enough room. My new, my new place, actually. I might have enough room to brew some own beer. And I That's might, why you I might need try. the windy bits. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, Sure, sure, yeah, well, I'll just really quickly describe yeah. what I'm doing here if everybody's confused. Yeah. Um, so what I did was I went ahead and took some poached chicken. Just it. There we go. I, I took some poached chicken. Uh, I actually like to poach my chicken in chicken broth. Uh, I don't know that it's necessary, but I feel like it pumps up the flavor. So I take low-sodium chicken broth. I, I, I boil the chicken for about 20 minutes in the low-sodium chicken broth. Uh, then I shred it with two forks. So I took two forks, and I just kind of did a shredding process to shred the chicken. Uh, and then I chop celery and green onions and throw that in there. And I throw some uh, sliced olives, sli- not olives, almonds. You slice almonds that I normally buy at Trader Joe's. You can buy them just any place you find sliced almonds, though. Uh, and then the last thing, I have sliced grapes in there. So, I mean, you just take a few grapes and you slice them in half. You can also do dried cranberries, works just as well. Yeah. Um, this tastes a little, this has like a, it, whether you like it or not, what this will have is a kind of a, a bite that will burst in your mouth. Yeah. So if you prefer that, I, I do the fresh grapes. Otherwise, do dried cranberries for a, a, a bit more of a, a tart flavor. Um, and that's basically all the dry ingredients you need for the dressing. What I need to do now is I need to take about you know a cup and a half of mayonnaise. Yep. If anybody can see that. 
uh, I need to add a lot of curry powder. Now, it's weird. I have a lot of friends that tell me they don't like curry, but they still like my curry chicken salad. So, Shannon. <laughs> so, it's almost a half a jar of curry powder. I mean, I, I like a quarter of a cup of curry powder. It's very expensive type of salad. That's not cheap. This yeah. thing is like, you know. Depends on where you can get it. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, there was, um, we were just at a place yesterday. They had a place, they had a jar that was probably twice the size, and I think it was like two ninety nine. Oh. Yeah, of okay. curry, so not that Crush bad. What I said. And this is something that he makes a lot when he goes um, and he's catering on set. Yeah. So he's, I mean, he actually, we had to work out the um, portions of it because normally he's making something <laughs> that's like this, this big, yeah. you know, for everybody on set. Uh, and then it's very cost effective. Hey, let me ask you this. Like, you know, how, how you came up with this, uh, this job, like uh, uh, cooking for stars on set? That's what you do, right? This, <laughs> no, you know, no, I'm no. With this thing here, right? uh, it's generous to say stars, but yes. Uh, I mean, I don't no, know. I mean, there I have mean, been some stars. Know. There have been some stars. Uh, I, I, it really, it started with David Nett. He just uh, offered me a chance to be part of a show that he was uh, doing, and I came to his set and used his normal food budget. He normally bought Subway sandwiches for yeah. the people that he was cooking for on set and, you know, pizza. And, you know, that it, it increases morale so much to have something more than that. And so he just gave me his normal food budget. I wasn't, I was working for free. I didn't want to make any money. It was just a, for, for a friend. Um, and I used his normal food budget to make uh, yeah. food. And yeah. then that just spiraled out of control yeah. because somebody on that set wanted me to work on their next yeah. show. And then somebody on that oh, set wow. to the point where now I get calls and I turn down jobs yeah. regularly. I just, um, I, I have to hire an assistant to really even do what I want to do most of the time now. I just love right now when, when Ed said it increases morale on set. And I think almost every single person that's on a webcam right now was like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there really is. Ed, Ed's fantastic, and it's not just catering in general, but Ed specifically. Um, the stuff that he makes is so fantastic. It really does make a difference on set when you're trying to put together a project on a relatively low budget, and you have long days, and there's lots of hard work. Uh, Ed cooking for the, the crew is the best thing you can possibly do for yourself. Not yeah. just being hungry, and we like to eat good food. <laughs> and and it's, there's a difference between sandwiches and pizza, and yeah. the amazingly marvelous things that Ed cooks. It's it's uh it really is a morale booster. So after uh, thank you. So after after shoot, you guys will go to a restaurant or you go like to a uh, to your place and uh, you cooking a stone for everyone. <laughs> Uh, we go home and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long, they're 12 hour days. It's, it's... <laughs> All right, so I answered it. <laughs> hey, what are you drinking, David? No pepper. It looks like, it looks like red, it looks like Pinot. Uh, it's a 2011 Red Diamond Mal Malbec. Uh, oh, Malbec. Malbec. Right. Right. Yeah, I like it a little spicier, although this one's actually really mild and nice. It is. Uh, you were asking about experiences with wine, and when I was young, when I was quite young, we lived in Italy, and so wine was everywhere, even for kids. And I was, I remember I was about six, and we were at a restaurant, and they brought a little, like a juice glass filled with a red, probably a Chianti. And <laughs> my parents were like, have at it if they're going to give it to you. And uh, I didn't like how it tastes, and so the the waiter came back and and you know was like you don't want any, and I said you know I sort of wrinkled my nose, and he opened up an orange Fanta and cut the Chianti with orange Fanta, which then begat a terrible problem because it's all I wanted to drink, <laughs> uh, and then over the course rebinding my palate and doing away with the Fanta. But then in college, uh, I remember sneaking. I was I was younger than other kids in co college, and uh, on my friend on the phone with a friend, talking about how we were going to pool our money to buy a bunch of Boone's Farm wine for a party. Oh. And uh, yeah, on my way home, on my way back to school on the Sunday, I remember my mother giving me a hug and pressing forty dollars into my hand and saying, "Please do not buy Boone's Farm wine." Use this money. To buy <laughs> Why? So I, had, I had good wine connoisseurs looking out for me my whole life, so that I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't drink this well. Well, all right, guys. I mean, we uh, feel like it'll be over an hour now, and uh, um, uh, I just want to thank you very, very, very much for logging in and uh, on the, on Saturday beautiful weekend. You could go, you know, you could have gone fishing or anything like that. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to uh, to uh, invite you next time you come to Napa. If you can come to Napa, 
come and see us and we drink some good wine and uh, take care of you. Again, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, great success for the future of the series. I hope you, I'll be watching it and uh, I'll be talking about it, me and my friends and all that. Um, this is a very good... Hey, 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 hey. um, thank you very much. Um, guys, again, you know, thank you for stopping by and, uh, and uh, um, cheers. 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 Good job. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Ciao, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah.